In this box, we've got the 2024 Acer Chromebook Plus Spin 714. It's a premium high-spec 14-inch convertible Chromebook Plus model that I first saw at Google's Chromebook Showcase event back at the end of May. It's taken its time to become available in the UK. This one has got an Intel Core Ultra 5 processor with 8GB of low-power DDR5 RAM and a 512GB SSD for storage. It's got a great spec on paper, including the garage stylus that I'll show you later in the video. This one is a loan unit, supplied to me for review, but as usual, all the views are my own. Let's get into the unboxing and take a look. So first up, we've got the paperwork as usual. We shouldn't be needing that, but there's quite a bit in here. The cover for the charger is set up so you can make a laptop stand out of it again. So this whole sort of ethos of recyclable and reusable packaging. So yep, we've got the 65 watt USB-C power brick. And then of course I've got a UK plug to go with it. Let's get to the Chromebook itself. Okay, let's pop it out of this packaging and out of the sleeve, feeling really nice in the hand as expected, rounded off corners on every edge. It's a full aluminium chassis. The weight feels well distributed. I'll flash up on screen now what it's weighing in for me at. And it's a 14 inch device, but with that taller aspect ratio of 16 by 10 for the screen. So you get a bit more real estate in terms of productivity. So you can see it's that slightly taller build. I think this color is just imaginatively called gray. I thought these hinges were gonna be gold accents on the Chromebook, but these ones look to be silver, so Either way, I think that's looking pretty smart. Just before I show you the ports, I'm just gonna remove the protection out of the keyboard deck. So starting on the left-hand side, you've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so offering data transfer speeds four times faster than USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports that you might normally see, and obviously even faster than Gen 1 ports. You've got an HDMI 2.0 port, so good to see it's 2.0 rather than 1.4 that we see on a lot of Chromebooks. And it's got the power button with a built-in LED. Over on the right now, and you've got a physical volume rocker, a headset microphone combo jack, and a full-size USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port. The stylus lives in the front right corner of the Chromebook. So it's a USI active stylus pen. You can see the charging contacts there on the right-hand side very lightweight, it's gonna be very quick to charge, I imagine, and last for a fair time. Obviously do consider subscribing if you want to see the full review when I get to sort of test this and see what it's like to use in daily use. And of course, it just slides back in and clicks into the Chromebook again. For other connectivity, it's Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6E. Let's take a look underneath and show you the grill. So we've already seen the ventilation on the rear of the Chromebook. And then underneath, you've got the grill for the fan at the rear of the Chromebook. Okay, let's open it up and take a look inside. Being a convertible spin branded model, the screen can, of course, go back 360 degrees. So you can put it fully into tablet mode. We'll do that while we just take a look at the keyboard deck. So it's looking like a decent layout here. You've got good response on the keys, that sort of deeper travel that we see on some of the Acer models. Feels pretty nice, really quiet keyboard by the sounds of it. We've got a fingerprint reader as well. So that's available down in the bottom right-hand corner. And you've got a decent size, I believe it's glass touchpad. Yeah, so good click mechanism to it. Well seated and it feels like it's going to be good for taps as well. And then we've got the branding for the Intel Core Ultra 5 processor and graphics. It's also worth mentioning that although the outer lid and bottom of the Chromebook are aluminium, this keyboard deck is plastic and there's a very slight bit of flex when you apply some excessive pressure, but I don't think that's going to affect you when you're typing. We've also got the speakers up on the keyboard deck, which is always good to see, and they are either side of it there. The keyboard itself should be backlit too. I'll show that to you in just a bit. I'm gonna get this powered up and get set up with my test user so we can take a look around and a look at the display in particular. So the Acer hasn't powered up itself, even using the power button, which is quite normal for first use on a Chromebook. Often you'll need to connect power to it, so I'm gonna cheat a bit like I often do and use a power bank. This is actually one I'm testing right now that's been sent to me from Asperx to check out. 
So being 65 watt, this is enough to power and charge the Chromebook at the same time, so pretty handy. I'll link to this and the Chromebook in the pinned comment. If you want to see more on this one, do subscribe and tick the bell so you get notified when I publish any videos testing it out further. So with the power bank connected, I'm able to start the Chromebook up successfully. I'll get my test user set up and we'll take a look at the core spec and in particular this display. So just to recap the core spec and cover the options on this model line of the Acer Chromebook Plus Spin 714. This one has got an Intel Core Ultra 5 processor, it's the 115 new model, but you may find variations with up to the Core Ultra 7 or 9 processor. Chrome OS updates on all Chromebook Plus Spin 714 are through to June 2034, which I've just checked on the Chromebook now. And I've got 8 gig of low power DDR5 RAM, but Acer's spec pages suggest up to 16 gig is possible. And I've also got a 512 gig SSD for storage. It's fast storage, it's got a PCIe interface with NVMe 4.0. So in summary, you're not going to be struggling and you're not going to find a much better option for storage speeds when it comes to a Chromebook. Acer's spec pages suggest that 512 gig SSD is the highest spec option for storage. So before I go into the full spec of the display, let's look at the resolution as I think we can improve that. So let's just see what we're able to fit on screen at the moment gives you a little bit of an idea and then we'll see how we can improve that resolution. So I'll minimize that, click down in the bottom right, click on the settings cog and let's type display in and pick display size. So yeah, you can see the default here, if I zoom in, is 1536 by 960. Should be able to bump that up or down depending on how you look at it. So yeah, at 80%, I'm now running at the native resolution, if I zoom in again, 1920 by 1200. It can go up a little bit higher, but I think I'm going to keep it at that native resolution. So yeah, let's go back to 1920 by 1200. And if I show you what we're then able to fit on the screen, you can see we're getting a lot more on there and we're benefiting from that taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So to run you through everything you need to know about this display, it's touch, it's 14 inches coated with Gorilla Glass for protection. It's got a full HD plus resolution as I've shown. It's of course IPS and it's in this taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio. For brightness, it's claimed at 340 nits of brightness in this more gloss finish and it covers 100% of the sRGB color space, so colors do already look decent on it. It's got a 60 hertz refresh rate, so nothing too extreme there. And of course, it supports the Garage USI pen, which I believe is USI 2.0 compatible. Acer state the screen to body ratio is 84.75%. So the bezels along the sides do look nice and thin at the top and at the bottom, they're looking a little bit wider. At the top of the display, you'll find the 1440p Quad HD webcam with privacy slider, another example where this Chromebook goes above and beyond the minimum spec for Chromebook Plus. The Chromebook Plus exclusive software should of course run really nicely on all this high spec the Acer Chromebook Plus Spin 714 has to offer. As I record this, it's just waiting for the Chrome OS 130 update, but that will bring functionality as I've shown in my recent Chromebook Showcase video, like Help Me Read and the new Audio Recorder app. And of course, it's got Gemini and all of the other AI integration built in. As promised, here's a quick look at that backlit keyboard. I've just tried to make the room a bit darker to show you. Obviously, you can adjust it down to whatever level you like and back up to the full brightness. Okay, just trying out a bit of Real Racing 3 here in tablet mode. I'll flash up on screen so you can see what the Chromebook looks like from the side when it is folded over like this. Do let me know what you'd like to see in the full review. Drop it in the comments. Do consider subscribing if you're not already. And in the meantime, there's another Chromebook video from the channel for you to watch on screen now. Cheers.